Goldmark Cup. I'm from West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground where I spend most of my time. Everybody said, well, I'm from West Philadelphia. They're like, well, the playground? No. All right, so uh, I'm from uh, 36 and Hamilton Street. It's just uh, you know, what they used to call the bottom. I don't know what they call it. They still the bottom. They still the bottom. Man, it feels like the top now. I keep going back. I'm like, damn, this is a nice neighborhood. Yeah, I know, right? It really nice nice neighborhood. Neighborhood. Yeah. So, um, born and raised in Philadelphia, went to Powell School, my neighborhood public school, Greenfield, which is where my daughter goes right now, downtown. Um, after that, actually uh, switched over to private school, to Germantown Friends School, and got kicked out of there. Uh, finished up uh, at Friend Select High School, got a scholarship there. Um, barely graduated, thankfully. Uh, my parents went down, they were able to convince the, uh, the principal there to allow me to graduate. And uh, that's where I finished my schooling. Um, I knew coming out of high school that I didn't want to go to college necessarily. I knew that I enjoyed working. I was really, really into hip hop music at the time. Um, I grew up with a guy by the name of Tyree Simmons, who uh, later went on to become more widely known as DJ Drama. Uh, Gangsta Grill was a big mixtape we were working on back in the day. I think he's probably still doing it. Um, Tyree's killing the game down in Atlanta now. Um, and uh, really was passionate about that, had a lot of shows, was managing a guy by the name of Schooly B. He's an old school uh, rapper from Philadelphia, and is inventing gangster rap. If you don't know Schooly, you gotta learn about him because he's a real Philly. Um, and uh, realized that, um, you know, there was a lot going on in my life, and around 2008, I felt like, hey, there's more I want to do. I see all these people who I grew up with who are doing what I would term as hustles. You know, you needed a, a new kitchen or a door or a window fix or something. They could come in, real skilled people, but they weren't getting the jobs that were paying them sustained wages. They didn't have health care, they didn't have paid vacation, all of these things. And I kept thinking to myself, well, the people I grew up with are as skilled as anybody else that I know. But for some reason, they're not in the same jobs as people who are getting these high paying, you know, union jobs or construction jobs that are out there. So I saw a speech by a guy by the name of Van Jones. And in it, uh, he talked about a book he was coming out with called The Green Collar Economy. And in that book, he talks about how felt the economy was about to change. As Seth mentioned, we're moving to green power. Um, and we've got to uh, have all of this green energy infrastructure installed everywhere. Um, and we also want to insulate and make our homes more energy efficient. And how that's going to be a major job creator. The other thing that he, he said was, you know, it's not a nice thing. It's a necessary thing. If we don't all participate, it's not only going to be an economic failure, but it could also lead to uh, the end of life on Earth as we know it. Now, that's a big statement, right? You're going, oh, come on, man, really? But that's the problem we're facing, is our planet is heating up. If we don't change the way that we live, there's going to be a big problem coming down the pipe. And by change the way that we live, I don't mean, oh, you know, you got to you gotta stop doing what you love doing. I mean, every one of you right now has a device on you that takes electricity to run. Probably a phone, you're holding it right in your hand, right? There it is. Power, electricity, right in your hand. We figured out how to deliver that electricity to pretty much everywhere in the United States. I mean, isn't that pretty incredible? You wake up every single day well, you can pay your electric bill, you got access to electricity. The paying your electric bill can be a little difficult sometimes, but most of the time, you can have access to electricity, right? It's just there. But every little bit of electricity was converted from one energy source to electrical energy somewhere along the line. In other words, there was some work that needed to be done. 
Now we need to rethink how that work is done because the way that we convert one energy source to electrical energy is ruining our environment, literally. It's making it hard for us to breathe. It's making storms worse. It's making uh, it so that we can't live too close to the ocean anymore because the ocean is rising. Water levels are rising, okay? But here's the most amazing thing about this. It's an incredible opportunity for jobs, for work. That's why I got into this, is to work. Yes, there's lots of environmental benefits. Yes, you're doing right by your community, but you can also make a lot of money doing this. Um, is there, is there a couple slides? Yep. I'm gonna run a couple slides and I'm gonna tell you uh, a couple stories. Uh, Right now, who's the, the most wealthy person in the United States, maybe even the world? Elon Musk. Elon Musk, do you agree? Guy's a little crazy, perhaps, but he got a lot of money, right? <laughs> yeah, got a lot of money. Guess what? Elon Musk, electrification of cars, Tesla. By the way, got a Tesla out front. You wanna come check it out? Don't, let me tell you, those cars are. Official. <laughs> Damn, I did not know until I got in one. Electric cars are it, okay? Fastest thing you've ever seen in your life. So Which electric, uh, Model Y. Truck. Um, no, not the truck, it's a, it's a, it's considered the SUV, I guess. Um, holds a lot of tools. I got a funny story actually, I was putting, I was at Home Depot and I had to re-shingle one of our trading rooms at OIC, so I was putting shingles into the back of, of the Tesla. Guy walks by, he goes, you're putting shingles in a Tesla? And I was like, best work truck you've ever seen, he laughed. <laughs> but it's true, you know, it's, it's actually an amazing work vehicle. Um, you can store tools all over it. Uh, really, really great. And we're in the process uh, of electrifying our fleet. So we hope over the next two to three years to have electric trucks that are going out to job sites. More vehicles. What's that? Yeah, not even gonna need. Won't need a gas station. That's, that's the idea. Yeah, electric. Exactly. Plugins um, rather than pumps, right? So this is the future, right? This is the future. How do we change the way we've been making electricity with gas and uh, coal and all of these sort of bad for the environment ways of? converting one energy source of electrical energy into much more clean ways of doing it, right? And that's where solar comes in. That's the jobs that are out there right now. So let's talk about uh, some of those jobs that are available. Right now, we have two crews working, actually one of them on a PHA project not too far from here at uh, 10th and Norris. There's new PHA housing going in. The crew there uh, is on the roof of a six-story building, putting in solar up there. When we work at, at um, PHA projects, we have to pay something called prevailing wage. It is mandated by law. Does anybody know what the prevailing wage rate for a solar installer is in the city of Philadelphia? Hourly rate, take a guess. Take a guess. Is that hourly? Hourly. What do you think you're making now? 15, 25, 50. You gotta pay 50? this to, to install the. He has to pay. Oh, you gotta pay. pay. I'm paying 23. What do you think you're getting paid? 23. 23. What do you think? What's that? 24. Huh? 20. 30. 30. 25. What do you think? 30. 30. 25, and it gets 40, 30, 30 64. You're closest. Damn, I said, you're closest. I said 50, you know, I huh? Like you're all back. wrong. You're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay? You're all wrong. You know? I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to get $80. $100 now. Damn, I think I heard okay? you say that. Today. They're getting $100 an hour right now to do their work over at 10th and North. Okay? 
It is not good money. It's great money. No, great. All right. I wish I was making hundred dollars an hour anymore. Now, is that what they make every moment of every day? No, unfortunately, it's not. But there are projects that last a month, two months, sometimes three or four months, where they get paid back. Okay. I've seen people at the company who came in and were pretty much homeless. And now they got cars and places to live and they're starting families. All right? That's what we're here to do. At Solar States, we pay what's called a living wage. Right now, the minimum you can make coming into our company is $18 an hour. That is our minimum. Remember uh, you saw the slide? up here where it says you're going to get 14 an hour uh, for your internships when you come and work. Well, if you come and work with us as part of the internship, we add another $4 an hour on top of your 14 because we pay everyone minimally 18 an hour. Okay. We offer health insurance. We offer what's called a 401k. Everybody here understand what a 401k is? You know what it is. A retirement plan, okay? And our retirement plan is a little different from both companies. Our retirement plan works where we say, we're gonna put in 3% of your check whether you wanna match or not. Because we realize that if you're making 18, 20, $25 an hour, you need all of that money. But you still need to plan for retirement. So we're gonna help you do that by putting in 3% whether you match it or not. Everybody get what that means? All right. Now, I would imagine the average age of the folks in this room is in the early 20s, hopefully, maybe maybe younger, maybe older. How old are you? How old are you? You want me to guess? Man, you can't be more than 23. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. That was a good guess. That's no. wow. That was wrong. You 30? Wow. Wow, how about you? 22? Okay, so we got 30 to 22. Point is, there's something called compound interest. Compound interest. And it's this incredible thing that if you start saving money, even if it's just a little bit amount of money, and it starts compounding, and you do it over 40, 50, 60 years, you will be a millionaire. You will be a millionaire. All you have to do is put that little 3% away, every paycheck, which we're doing for you, over your work life, and then make sure it's invested, and the 401k does that, and it will grow. You guys will have a million dollars when you retire, just in that. It's pretty incredible. Wish I had known about it when I was younger. <laughs> But you have to start early. You got to start in your 20s and 30s. I'm, in, I'm mid 40s. I'm just starting and now I'm realizing, darn, I missed 15 years. I missed, you know, 20 years of it. Wish I had 20 more years of compound interest on that. All right. Um, so uh, actually, this is a pretty funny photo. Zay, who's right here, as we mentioned, is, is our o &M. That's Malik. He's working at the water department, right? Um, so there's a lot of opportunity here, all right? And one of the reasons why we're filming this is because we've had a number of folks who've come through Power Core who are now leading our team. As I mentioned, Zay's on the O&M team. But our commercial installation team is led by a guy by the name of Cottrell Holmes. And I so wish I had videotaped the session that Cottrell came through because now, Almost six years later, he's leading our commercial team, okay? So it's not just um, something where I'm saying, hey, this might happen, or it's possible this could happen. I'm saying this has already happened, and you could be the next one it happens with, okay? Here's a little uh, interview we did with Cottrell. I hope you can hear that. Micah at Solar States, how y'all doing? Happy New Year. I'm here with my man Cottrell Holmes, and we're here to talk about Cottrell's journey to Solar States. So Trell, if you can believe it, has been with us for six years this February. Unbelievable. Trell, congratulations, Thanks, man. man. Well done, man. So tell us, man, how did you come to Solar States? I started out at Power Quarry 
Uh, as most of you know, it's a program for young adults. Um, started in the GSI crew, the actual first GSI crew to start. If you don't know what GSI is, it's Green Storm, green storm Water Infrastructure. Um, and then I did the six month program and they uh, helped me find Micah. I didn't know anything about solar. I've never been on a roof before. <laughs> <laughs> I did an interview with him. He's like, yeah, be on it. Meet me at the shop 6.30. You're going to be on the roof tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and it all started from there. Six years later, I'm a crew lead now. That's right. So, you know, Cottrell was really a big part of us understanding our mission and understanding what we were here to do. And Solar States, we're not just solar installation, but we're solar installation and education. We are the on-ramp to the green collar economy for inner city Philadelphians. Not only that, we want to see the people who start as installers rise up through the company. What has that process been like for you? Oh man, it's, it's been a journey from not knowing anything. I've, I mean, I had experience with power tools and everything, but doing it on the roof, it's a different ball game. <laughs> it's a totally different ball game. And this year, Cottrell took the big step we got him in an electrical training class. Tell us what you learned there, man. Was I, that good? Yeah, it was an electric training, training class. And I'm furthering my education to become a master electrician. That's right. So he's taken all the courses and he's been with us for more than four years. And now we're going to assist him in getting his electrical license for the city of Philadelphia. That's what success looks like. We want to see Cottrell get his license and really blossom into having a lot of options in life going from not knowing what he wants to do to boom having a lot of options yeah. about what to do how's that feel man feels feels like success oh man. <laughs> it feels like success i mean every every step of the way is successful but i got a lot more to go there you go, oh, there you go. i gotta say Cottrell said one of the most profound things to me once in in our employee interviews we do lots of uh you know, checkups on our employees to see how they're doing, see if they have feedback. And I said, so, Trell, how do you like your job? He said, what job? And I was like, kind of stunned. Like, what do you mean, what job? The job you're working <laughs> at. And Trell goes, this isn't a job. I said, what do you mean it's not a job? He goes, this is a career. That's one of the most profound things anyone has ever said to me. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. That actually, um Two nights ago, I went to the Sixers game with Cottrell. Um, and I was like, yo, man, we'll take the Tesla. We'll the... He goes, no, nah, man. <laughs> no, nah, I'm going to take my new Volvo. He's got this dope Volvo that he was driving. Took me down to the game. And I was like, oh, yeah, Cottrell, you turned out shiny there for a minute. <laughs> It's like, goodness gracious, right? So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, Trell's doing, doing big things. And you know how? He comes on time, 6.30 in the morning. He works hard. He asks questions. When he doesn't know something, he doesn't just charge forward. He says, hey, I don't know how to do this. Can somebody train me up on this? Tell me what it is. I can't tell you how many times he's been out of sight. He FaceTimes me. Yo, I haven't seen this before. What do you think is the best way of handling this? He talks with Nate, who supervises a lot of the crew. Um, so those are the types of things that we're looking for in installers. People who, you know, you don't have to know everything. In fact, you don't have to know really much. We're here to train you, okay? But don't pretend like you know something you don't. That's the key part of learning. If you don't know, just act. I just wanted to jump in real quick to what Charles said. He, he didn't do, this is before the Bright Solar Future program, so he came straight from Power Pro, straight from GSI. So you guys actually will become, like if you were, if you were going to the program, like you probably would be more prepared going into the opportunity like that because you would have all the training and things like that that he didn't really get Right. Yeah, and um, there's another video for a gentleman by the name of Thomas Glenn. And Thomas also came uh, in, straight into the program. Another one of our amazing success stories, okay? Um, Thomas didn't know anything about solar, was sitting in your seat, came to our program, took the course, got his own electrical license, 
uh, had a girlfriend who was moving to Colorado. And we have a, a sister company in Colorado. I think he came to the Southern Popular one time. Yeah. Oh, speech. And okay. He was there and we uh, talked to him. Yeah, yeah. So he's now living out in Colorado, making like 40, 50 an hour because he's a licensed electrician installing solar out there. So we're here not just to make sure uh, that you learn about solar, but we want you to get your own electrical license. You know what you can do with your own electrical license? Anything. <laughs> That's the answer. It's anything. You can go in any direction you want. You can do small housework. You could join the union. You could go to a hostel and do huge electrical installations. You could work as a linesman for Pico. I mean, there's so many options when you have your own electrical license. You could start your own business, whatever you want to do. But the key is, is to learn, is to be there, is to work hard. The biggest part is showing up day in and day out. And it can be a grind, I won't lie, it's not gonna be all fun and games. It's gonna be cold out, it's gonna be hot out. Um, you know, you're gonna be tired. You're gonna have a kid who kept you up all night. You're gonna have, you know, this, that, and the other. And the people who are succeeding at this can just stiff arm everything else that's going on in their life and realize that the ball is their career. And they're gonna run that ball forward just like the Eagles do every week when they're killing people out on the team. No, I'm just kidding. How'd I get off on the Eagles? Um, so, uh, no, it, it's important to focus on your career, as Cottrell said. I thought it was a job. I said, you know, to Cottrell in a moment, so how do you like your job? He said, it's not a job, it's a career. And that's what we're looking for, is people who see that opportunity and want to grab it. Um, and with that, I'll open it up. Any questions?